Now today we're going to watch a few videos because I want to watch this video before we jump into the Colleen Bollinger stuff. Because apparently yesterday some stuff went down in France, right? And if you don't know about it, we're going to we're going to watch a video that talks about it, right? Now everybody in France is burning down Paris apparently, and I keep seeing some stuff on TikTok that makes me feel like we should talk about it just a little bit. So let's get through this guy's um, ads here, and we'll uh, we'll see what's what makes them happier than the farmer's dog. We're putting a link in the video description for 60% off your first box if you'd like to try it for your pup. Every Wow, that's really loud. Hold on a second. We're going to we're going to adjust that volume. This video is loud as hell. Okay, so as you see, Protests and violence continue to rock Paris over a police shooting of a 17-year-old delivery driver. So, from what I've seen, this kid was driving without a license. The police shot him. I don't know why. I don't know what led to that. And the police lied about it, but there was a bystander who filmed the whole thing. So... Uh, obviously, that goes to the internet, and now everybody knows what happened, and this is the outcome. These guys are all just hanging out now. Like, oh man, look at the city burn. Yeah. Burning down the buses, the bus stop. So here's something to think about. Uh, we'll just let it go. Here's something to think about when you see stuff like this going on. Is these people that are rioting aren't ever doing anything that's actually making anything better or changing anything, right? They're just like, oh, we're mad. We're going to burn everything down. But they're burning down a bus stop and a bus. Who's that effect? That affects the general public trying to get around Paris. That doesn't affect anything that took place here. It doesn't make anything change. Now they're burning that building over there. At least it looks like the framework of a building, but yep, there you go. Burning a building at the park, it looks like. I mean, good job, right? Foolish. Like, once again, who's that? How's that making anything change? How's that making anything better? It looks like you burned down a public restroom. Like, at a, at a park, right? No, no. It was a ride. It was a children's ride. So they burned down a children's ride. That's, yeah, you're really, uh making a difference today burning down a children's carnival ride and you're spraying fire extinguishers in the air now to smoke out the area but it's like you understand these idiots don't understand like breathing in that smoke is gonna fuck you up and they're just trying to make a screen between the police and them and the police aren't even doing anything so what's what's the point oh because you're gonna throw rocks from the other side of it you see how that's not helpful? How it's only making shit worse? This is ridiculous. Oh, it's the cops! Let's shoot Roman candles at them. We've been doing that as children in the U.S. forever. You know what happens? Nothing. Nothing at all. Mild burns, maybe a lump or a bruise if it actually smacks you good at a decent range. Like, it's not... It does nothing. It does absolutely fuck all. So... We're going to skip through some of this because it's just footage of... Let's see, they already showed that anyways. See, it's just more public stuff getting burnt down, right? More public property, someone's private vehicle. 
maybe someone's private like that looks like a public parking garage or something right like what what are what are they burning down here what are they changing what are they fixing how is this fixing the issue oh we're upset that this is what you guys did as police officers okay but how are you how has this changed the way the police behave all right so you get the point now, the, my critiques of this are in place for a very specific reason. This does absolutely nothing at all to fix the problem. And French people continue to do it. They've been doing it forever. They've literally been doing this for centuries to fix problems. And yet they still have the same problems. This is They're literally trying to fix a problem over the span of centuries and they're getting absolutely nowhere because they're they've never done anything effective to do anything about this not one time so they still have the same issues meanwhile there are communists on TikTok who think that this is some great thing to use for their propaganda efforts and what they do is they say things along the lines of uh, In France, the police kill a 17-year-old, or they'll just leave out the age and say, kill a minor, leaving out the fact that it's 17. Yes, that's a minor, but I mean, it's not a 10-year-old. And when they use the word minor, they're trying to make you think of somebody much younger than what they are. So they do this nonsense where they change somebody's age to being called a minor so that they can get away with bullshittery. First thing. Secondly, they then go on and on and on about how... Well, not on and on. It's really... they just, It's as simple as a meme, right? So in France, police kill a minor and people riot and start fires. In America, we send prayers and thoughts, thoughts and prayers. Nothing gets done. They ignore the entire summer of peace. Is that what they're doing? Because, I mean, didn't we have Antifa and BLM go around and burn down buildings and take over entire portions of cities, major cities in the U.S.? And nothing changed, did it? Nothing changed, but they're going to ignore that because one, they'd have to ignore, they'd have to acknowledge rather the violence from the things they support and that support them. Two, they have to also acknowledge the fact that it didn't change anything. It didn't make the situation better. No money went to actually helping out lower income communities or inner cities and making those better areas with a higher level of success. They did absolutely nothing to fix the problem. Meanwhile, they're going to act as if somehow their ideology is better. What's really going on here is these communists want you to think that if you create chaos and violently overthrow the power that's in place today, which is obviously government, right? Our current democratic republic government with a capitalist, somewhat anyways, capitalist economic system. So what do you end up with? These people pushing for you to violently act out against them. Why? Because if you violently act out against the government and succeed... Let's just say you succeed. We're not going to get into the specifics. We're just going to create the scenario that they're they're pushing for here. Is that you violently create a, a power vacuum is what happens. You overthrow the government. Now you have a power vacuum. A power vacuum they can now step in and assume control of the country over. And you've already got the majority of the infrastructure. All they have to do is figure out a way to get the money and the materials and the manpower, which isn't hard to do in a communist society if you just look at how they've done this historically time and time again, to repair the damage that's been done. And then what they're going to do is have themselves in positions of power to instead of actually... I don't know, working within the system to change the way it works because it's how our system here is devised. Go vote. 
donate your money to systems and organizations and groups of people that actually try to fix these problems. Not groups like BLM that just go out and riot and protest, but they don't actually affect any kind of change, but groups that truly do attempt to make a difference. Give it to soup kitchens that are actually trying to feed people that have no home. Try to actually give time and money to things that are actually making a difference and be involved in the nuances of your local politics and policies, the legislation that goes on, not because of the color of the party next to them, not because of the fancy words they say, but because of the actual legislation and the repercussions of it. Because you see what these guys are trying to do is they're trying to have a situation like when America went into Iraq, we killed Saddam Hussein and then we left and then we had to go back into Iraq. Do you guys remember we had to go back in because ISIS came in and filled in the power vacuum and they filled it in with tyranny and murder borderlining on an effort of genocide, genocide for anybody who didn't agree with their extremist views. And you have to understand the people in Islam, the Muslim people in the Middle East, do not like ISIS en masse. Like in general, they do not like ISIS because of the way it plays into the entire thing, the perception it gives everybody and the way it manipulates their faith. The majority of them don't like it. ISIS is a very violent minority. And because of their violence and their eccentric, their eccentric way of being and the fact that they have connections to money through that, that level of just extremity, they're able to have much larger influence than their small portion of society should have had. So we had to go back in. So because we created the power vacuum, so we went in and tried to correct the power vacuum problem that we left behind letting ISIS in there to just overrule everything and just be a menace to everything that exists in their region. So similar thing happens in Afghanistan, right? Saw that too. That's what they're hoping for here. And they're trying to swing this in a strange way as if somehow, if you don't look through history, you can't see that Stalin was not better than Hitler. They actually had a competition, essentially, to see who could eliminate the most Jews in that window of time between their two nations. You, oh, well, that was Stalin. Yeah, and Lenin killed millions of his own people. Mao, millions of his own people. Pol Pot, millions of his own people, but because of the way that he discriminated and the way that he went about executing people and killing people, you could say is worse than Mao who killed the most. You look at Castro targeting and killing his own people who disagreed with him. And some people like to wear the Che Guevara shirts and things of this nature. I get it. You have this assumption of what he was, but did you know that Amongst all these things that you've been told to glorify of Che Guevara, that he was also killing, well, he didn't kill anybody. He was kind of, kind of lackluster in actually doing things, but he did tell his subordinates to do so based on his ideology and his ideology called for the extermination of all black people. These are just a handful of examples off the top of my head of communists and what they do when they have power. They just start eliminating anybody that disagrees with them violently, immediately, and permanently through death. In the U.S., these people who have this communist view, you exist. You're allowed to exist. You're allowed to have that opinion. People aren't rounding you up and killing you for it. Our country's not perfect. We rounded up anyone from Japan during World War II and put them in camps because we thought that they were a threat to the Union, even though they had done nothing and could have been here for several generations. But because they were Japanese, they got rounded up, right? Like, that's not good. The way we treated the Native Americans, not good. Better than anybody else has treated the natives of the lands that they've gone to and quote-unquote discovered and ended up inhabiting 
colonizing, whatever you want to call it. We didn't wipe them off the face of the earth and we didn't take all the land and then say, look, now you're just part of our country and this is what you do. We let them keep portions of the country, not the best portions, but we let them keep portions of it that they are completely in control of. No other nation's done that. No other nation does that as well as giving them money every year through taxes every year to these places that are essentially their own nations that reside within our country that we recognize the people of as members of and citizens of our nation and we give them aid we give them food we give them money we give them support and what they need they're able to go get a completely free education if they have a certain amount of native american in their genes they can have laws on the reservations that are completely contradictory to what the United States has as laws, and it, the United States federal government will not intervene because of the fact that we have stated that that is their own sovereign land. Nobody else has done that. As flawed as we are, we still allow you to have your views, and nobody's tried to round you up and eliminate you or wipe you off the face of the earth for disagreeing. They just disagree with more words which is not what these people would do. It's why it's not a better system. And because of the way I keep seeing it being pushed around on TikTok, and I've seen a few things on Instagram lately as well, it's definitely on Twitter. I saw two, I think, on Twitter, but I don't spend much time there. I think it needs to be brought up. I think it needs to be said because people have a strange faith in communism that it has never once earned or deserved.